Hello everyone and welcome to Heels Off at Home where we talk about life, current affairs and so much more. Right guys, so um, you know me, I'm an insecure girl. No, actually, let me take that back. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, what? Where are we going with this? Got dark, very <laughs> Let me let me let me let me reclaim my steps. Um, what therapy. I, what what I was trying to say was as you already know, I've been watching Insecure week on week and in one of the episodes it definitely triggered something in me. Um Issa Rae was basically having like a heart to heart moment with her mum and her mum mentioned the fact that the reason why she might be finding it so hard to figure out what she wants to do in life is because she was always that girl who was good at everything when she was younger. So I think the question for me is to you ladies, have you ever been in a situation where you've been passionate about so many different things and because of that you found it quite difficult to boil it down into one? Oh my God, yes. Like I can relate to that so much. Like growing up, I always felt like I was um, kind of, you know, jack of all trades, master at none, Same. where like I was relatively good at a lot of things. Like even if I look at my GCSE grades, I had like an A star, then it was B, 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 across the board, apart from in maths. And then at A levels, I had A, A, B, 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 B. And it was like, okay, where, where do I go from here? Like it wasn't helpful to me. And I think that when you're young, people assume that if you're doing relatively okay, it means you have everything figured out. But I was always in a position where I felt like I had so many options available to me. And because of that, I was so confused. At one point, I wanted to be a lawyer. Uh, at another point, I wanted to work in PR. At another point, I wanted to work in comms. Then I wanted to be an actress. Then I wanted to do this, that, this. And it was just like, what do I do? And for a long, long time, I had like zero sense of purpose. And I would say only at about 28 was the first time in my life where I was like, this is me. This is what mm. I'm good at. This is what I want to do. Mm. This is what I enjoy. But up until that point, yeah, my my mind was everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, when I was at school, I never, ever, there wasn't a job called an influencer, of course, as we all know. Right. But I always knew I wanted to work within the media. But one minute it was like radio, next it was TV presenter, next um, I want to become um, a magazine editor. <laughs> However, I just knew I wanted to do something in media. I just didn't know what it was that mm. I wanted to do. And um, when you grow up in a Nigerian home, of course, as we all know, the only two options is doctor and, exactly. um, and lawyer. And luckily, <laughs> my family got the, the doctor because my sister's a doctor. <laughs> so That's I was just like... Have siblings. It is because you don't take on the pressure. So right. I feel like because they got their prayer from God with that child, I was able to do whatever I wanted. <laughs> yeah. And I had a bit of leeway to have a bit of freedom. And I think my family always knew I was a creative in terms of I liked writing. I liked creating stuff and um, putting pen to paper. However, at the same time, I still it was more like, OK, you can do all these things but how are you really going to get through the door and who's going to give you that opportunity right. and how are you going to create it for yourself instead? I think it's weird for me. I like did the opposite. So when I was younger, I had like I had always known like what I wanted to do. So even if I was good at other things in my head from secondary school, I was like, I want to be an actor. That's it. There's nothing right. else. And like when you want to be an actor, when you go to drama school, they literally tell you that if you want to do anything else, you shouldn't be an actor because acting wow. is so hard that wow. if you have a desire to even wow. want to do anything, then acting isn't for you. So I literally went through like, you know, 16 and obviously 17, I went to New York. It's even more intense over there where it's like acting is life. Like you need to breathe acting and you shouldn't even think about anything else but acting. So my head was always acting, 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 acting. And it's actually only in my late 20s when I realised I can do other things as well as do acting. So even though I had been in business from when I was like 20, it was always this thing like it's just a backup thing. I'm not really a business person. Right. It's just something I do until I get my big break. Do you know what I mean? But in my mind, it was always acting but confusion came upon my life like when I was like 26 and suddenly there was this panic of oh my gosh like what's my purpose in life like right. what do I want to do oh I can do this oh I can do that I can it's just been like a big ball of confusion so it's interesting how you guys kind of felt that earlier on 
Whereas I was like jumping around like, oh, I know what I'm dealing with my life. And I thought I was set. And then suddenly when you guys figured it out, I was like, oh, flip. What am I doing? (laughs) Yeah, no. I I feel like in uni, not uni, but like in secondary school, if you guys did, like if you went to college or did A-levels, they had that careers guide person who would come in and try and help you. I swear to God, I was thinking about this a couple of days ago. I felt like this woman looked at me like there was no hope for me in life. Like it was so (laughs) mad. And I get it now when rappers are like, yo, yo, teacher said I was never going to make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel it because I was that person. And now it's just like, they want you to come give talks. It's like, nah, because that evil the Korean table woman has turned. <laughs> turned. No, I agree. I feel for, for me, it was so, it was really, really hard because I felt like I was two people. Because um, mm. I was my, I'm my mum's only child. It was that, there was that pressure to be very academic. And so because of that, I excelled. So like Tony, I was getting A's and A stars. So I was pretty like, okay across the board. But there was always something in me that was like, I wanted to be on stage. Like I wanted to, I was in all the dance shows, all the, performing arts classes like and there was even a point where I had to choose between performing arts and maths for A levels and obviously I did want to do performing arts but my mum was just like listen what are you doing here so <laughs> yeah um so to come I and was, do, do, do A-level, you know I mean? moving moving what's it called like moving performance or it something doesn't, like that it, it, do, it didn't make sense to my family it didn't make sense so i i went with the whole doctor route i was just like okay i'm gonna be a doctor this is what i want to do and i was passionate i did all the gamsa all the exams in the world um i ended up doing biomedical science for university so i really thought like that was my path but it's so interesting interesting because when you are multifaceted at like um like we probably we all are basically you're it's almost like I think in my 20s the other side started to kind of battle that academic side it started to challenge it a lot more and that's when I started getting more into the internet more into fashion more into social media but even when I was in social media there was still a voice in my head that said Mm, what you're doing is too risky have a backup plan and that's when I started to be like okay cool I'm not gonna fully embrace this creative side but maybe if I apply some 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 sort of academia to it it can make sense which is when when, then when I started working in marketing because I was just like there's a little bit of creativity there but I can still make you know a nine to five income like it's not the end of the world so it's so interesting that you know I had to really kind of battle with myself from let's say the ages of like 14 up until like 26 27 to to then end up being a dj after all of that after the doctor after marketing and i know my mom's looking at me sideways still like did i really put this girl in grammar (laughs) school for her to be but it's it's i feel like being from an immigrant family as well sometimes there is that guilt because what we're doing now, we could have never foreseen it like 10 years ago. And even yeah. now, it still feels quite risky. It's very mm. irregular. So it's like, sometimes it feels like, okay, maybe if I just kind of did like, you know, like a normal to-do job, a nine to five, something with a b- bit more stability, then it would make, you know, their their heart pressure like a Relax. lot easier yeah, and yeah. more relaxed. I don't know how some people do it because I mean, I do understand it and I respect it. But I feel like because I'm such a creative, I can't sit at a desk and do those hours. I feel like I'm such a restless person. I don't want to sound cliche, but you know, like they do say creatives need their own time. They work at their own pace and they need inspiration. Like I genuinely believe I embody that. And again, I definitely do respect 9 to 5 because I've done it before. That's interesting because where I felt like I was a jack of all trades, mine was a bit of the opposite where... I could do a nine to five and I've done a nine to five and I've done it very well. And like up until now, like I have worked in a nine to five since leaving university. Like I worked all throughout uni, left university, was doing nine to fives. Like I'm now 30. This is the first time where I'm not doing a nine to five because I literally left my job like this month. Um, But I could see I the difficulty for me was doing nine to fives, being good at them and excelling in them and thinking, should I just focus on that? It's good. I get money. It's safe. The checks roll in every month. And 
it doesn't jar me. Um, but then I, I did notice myself getting more frustrated at work, not necessarily because of the job, but because my workload outside of my nine to five was increasing so much. And for me, it became, uh, it became a result of like having to look in a mirror and say, you know what, what's more important to you right now? Is it security or is it enjoying the job you do? And I was good at that job, the same way I've been good at other jobs, but I enjoy the stuff I do outside of my nine to five more. So I just had to like suck it up. And that's when I was like, okay, you know what? I could so do this nine to five thing, but I really, really enjoy this other thing. So let me focus on that while I'm at my momentum and while I'm like really, really excelling in it. And it's crazy because even when I, asserted that I was quitting my nine to five and I left like even when I left like last week I was like okay am I doing the right thing am I doing the right, right. thing and I think it's because like I, d I had a great job like I worked for Oxford University I was like their lead communications manager for students and it was like an amazing job a job that I know that I was lucky to get I know I was skilled to get but I was also lucky to get it as far as like the availability at the time and it's a job that a lot of people would love working in communications like working for the top university in the world um but I just had to suck it up and say you know what even though you're good at that and you're good at this this is where your passion lies. So I guess off the back of that, I want to ask you guys like where you've all said that you had a bit of trouble trying to determine uh, what to do. When, what happened to make you say, this is me, even though I'm good at a lot of stuff, this is what I want to do. Like what was yeah. the switch that and changed you know everything? What? Uh Let's, you want to go? You go, Sadie. Go. Okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Do you know what it is? Failures have actually been what has led me to making the next step. So um, I am naturally so risk averse. So as much as you might see me, whether it's on Instagram or just on any social media, it looks like, you know, I'm a go-getter. I take risks. No. Like, <laughs> if I can avoid taking risks, I will. Literally, yeah. everything is so, not even calculated, but it's like, I always weigh up the pros and cons. Mm. Um, I always want to make sure that I'm safeguarded. So for me, it was like doing what I'm doing now was always a hobby. Like I was so committed to building a career, uh, working in the nine to five, having a stable income, because for me, that was my way to hopefully get out of you know generational debt you know cr mm. get that financial freedom but it was always when i failed that it pushed me it pushed against my that that voice in my head that said oh no stay here like be safe it always mm. went against the grain so it took me um it took me when i was working at google yo like i was living my best life but Literally, I was like, oh, maybe the grass is greener somewhere else. Now I look back, I was just like, mm, maybe not. But <sighs> I was just like, maybe the grass is greener somewhere else. So this curiosity pushed me into getting another job. Um, whilst I was doing that, though, I was still DJing and I was still kind of using my Instagram as a way to showcase like who I was and what I was about career wise. But when I wanted to see if the grass was greener, the world showed me Pepe. Within six weeks, I got fired. <laughs> six weeks. Damn. Wow. I went from I went from working at Google to getting fired. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? And literally, the, and literally in that moment, I had nothing except mm. all my hobbies. That's mm. all I had. Mm. So a week later, I went to Ibiza and I went to Ibiza and because of networking and I, I really urge people like even no matter what you do network mm -hmm. as much as you can because you just don't know who's going to help you at different points tiny tempest camp didn't know what my situation was but obviously they'd seen me DJing and kind of like making steps and strides and they literally must have asked me like do you want to DJ at um this event in Ibiza disturbing Ibiza so my one week fired self was like yeah let, let's do it why not and literally off the back of that opportunity, when I came back to London, it was almost as if everyone now saw me as a DJ because obviously wow. I'd just done that gig, but not realizing that literally every night I was crying, I was scared, I was anxious. I was like, I don't have a job. Like, how am I gonna make mm. money? Like I was literally so 
shattered and shell-shocked. But it's interesting because if that never happened, I wouldn't be this where I am today. Mm, yeah. So mm. sometimes it's really good to take note of your failures because 100%. your failures can give you the lesson or the nudge to move into the direction and the purpose that you're actually meant to be in. So that's mm -hmm. my story. Nah, listen, that is a word and a half. It's so true. Like, honestly, like embracing those failures because sometimes I feel like we need a push. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. our heart knows what we're supposed to be doing, but we're just so stuck yeah. in our ways. And like, so we're just stuck. like, I have to do this. No, I have to do it this way. And sometimes we just need that little push in a different direction for you to realize actually nah I need to focus on what I'm actually passionate about and that's right. like with me I'm like I got into business when I was 20 years old and it was always like this thing of oh this is just a backup plan I'm about to be in Hollywood doesn't matter I'll be here for one year and that's mm -hmm. it obviously I was not there for one year and my big break did not come so it's like I realized I couldn't do both do you know what I mean? Like be, right. you know, in a salon 24 seven and try and build a really sick salon brand. Then also my passion that's being creative, which is, which comes in different capacities, whether it's through acting or whether it's through podcasting and interviewing people or whatever it may be. I just found that working constantly on a business was literally like squeezing the creativity out of me almost. Right. So I right. found that I was doing less, less and less acting and more and more business, but then struggling with business at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I've spent the last 10 years in a constant state of stress. Wow. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's only in lockdown where it's like, hold, where I'm not it's, feeling it's as stress. Yeah. And I'm like, is this what it feels like to not, you know, have my phone ring and be anxious thinking that something's happened? Like I right. had forgotten what it felt like, what it felt like to just be still and not be so stressed out all the time and right. I just find that so like mad like to just think that you can only do I don't know if I'm making any sense but do no, you know what I mean it, it, it proper like took like lockdown to realize actually I need to embrace like more of my passions and I just think I just I say this just to say that it's okay if you do get to that space that place of like just yes. switching <laughs> do you know what I mean and just doing something else if it means you're going to have peace of mind. Does that make any sense? I feel like I went round and round. Like my thoughts just went like... No, it's okay to change your mind. I think that's another thing as well. Like, yeah. sometimes it's like the world, the li life, social media. And I think that's what it is. Like, a lot of times, the world, <laughs> social media, society, they won't allow young adults, especially our <sighs> 20s, they don't allow us to change our mind. Mm. Like, what I said I want to be at 18 doesn't necessarily have to be what I want to do at 21 or 24 yeah. or mm -hmm. 34. Like, mm -hmm. and I think mm -hmm. that pressure to always have to know exactly where you're trying to go in life can actually it's debilitate us from even making that first move in the first place. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I just want us to be able to just feel free. Like if we don't want to do something no more, like we actually just don't have to do it. We can switch it up, man. Mm -hmm. Like I think the worry fun. for me was not wanting to be that starving artist because I love yeah. money. I love money. I do. <laughs> I'm you know what? I'm glad you, I'm it's glad in you my said thing. that. It's yeah. like I. It's true because at the end of the day, I was just like, yeah, I love to use social media, but how are you gonna make money from this? You know. I hear that. And I'll yeah. be honest, I only started seeing real money maybe like three or four years ago. Before that, I was honestly a struggling artist, and it was just like, <laughs> you know, I don't enjoy this as either. I get a job and work for the white man, or I work for myself. <laughs> So I think, yeah, it's, you know, it's all airy fairy to be like, yeah, have your passion and have this, but you need to be smart. How I are you going to make you, how are you going to make money from this? And I think for me, yeah. I don't feel like I was always smart. I wish I was smarter, which is weird to say in hindsight, because I don't know, I felt like with what I do, um, I never really had a plan B. And that's the craziest mistake you could ever have. Um, even though I wanted to be a journalist and I did my internships and I worked for Cosmo, I thought, yeah, this is really what I want to do. I want to work for magazines and da 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 Until I worked there and I'm like, no, I don't really think I want to do this, you know. Yeah. But I didn't have a plan B. I never had a plan B. I could only rely on what 
my, um, yeah. I don't know, what I'd learned and what I, my skills that I'd developed throughout, I don't know, college and university. But I would definitely tell people, make sure you have a plan B and make sure that that plan B, in a way, is connected to plan A. Ex- exactly. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. Like, that connection is so... What you said, that connection is so key because mm. you can have a plan B, but what happens is that you can get stuck in plan B. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And I feel like if you have a plan B, it needs to link towards yeah. what your plan A is. And I think mm-hmm. one thing that I didn't realise was that, like I said, when you're in drama school and all of that stuff, it's like acting is life, you must breathe it and all of that stuff. Yeah. And it's like, there's actually so many things that can lead you to what your purpose in life is. And I think it's important to like embrace all of those things. Like, yeah, right. like for, for example, I try to be a radio presenter. I try to be a TV presenter. I've done it. All, I've, I've done, done it all. all. Do you know what I mean? But it's like each thing has, I don't know, it all links together. It contributed some, to the next yeah, step. Yeah, exactly. It contributes to the next step. So it's like, you can say that you want to be an actor, but you don't have to go the conventional way of what you've seen other people do. You can be a presenter and still yeah, be an actor. Like, it. Maya Jama's got an acting role. I'm sure it's this year that we're probably going to see it. I don't know if you guys saw wow. the announcement. Ooh. But she'd always wanted to be an actor. But True. then she went the presenter route. Now that she's a, a successful presenter, she can do whatever she wants. And, and now she's yeah, gone back true. to acting. Do you know true. what I mean? And, so, even if, and even if, like, for example, I think the best way that I could describe it. Say you want to be like, um, I don't know, if you want to work in radio. You don't mm-hmm. need to go for that actual, like, you know, radio seat. You don't have to be a radio presenter. It could mm-hmm. be you being a radio producer. You might think, do you know what? Let me go into radio producing. Before you know it, somebody's, I don't know, someone calls in sick or they die. And then you have yeah. to take that spot, you know? <laughs> Anything can happen. Anything can happen. But do you get what I'm saying? My, no, my point it, is that it, it can lead to it different can lead things. Because even like, yeah. for example, when I was using social media, I didn't think my social media was going to be able to get me like a TV show ending up on BBC. Like I never ever exactly. visioned that at all. I never thought exactly. that me using 140 characters could build a platform one day mm. and potentially have my mum and dad telling everybody, yes, my daughter, yes, yes, that's her, nine o'clock on BBC <laughs> One, you know. <laughs> I never thought it. that would happen, but here yeah. we are. Exactly. Yeah, I exactly. think transferable skills are so important. Like I say mm-hmm. this to people all the time who uh, are either risk averse or they might not have the luxury of taking risks. Because that's another thing I want to I wanna touch on. Like the ability to take a, a, a risk sometimes is a luxury in 100%. that, especially when you are a child of, of um, immigrants, for example, and a, a lot of uh, immigrant children or, or children of immigrants find themselves in positions where they are financially responsible for people in their family, right. or mm-hmm. they take on a lot of financial responsibility quite early. And for them, they might have a lot of dreams and goals, but um they have to consider so many other people's lives which can be a massive massive burden so yeah. they may yeah. want to quit their job and try and be a dj for example but they know okay i have to take we a more quit. traditional route <laughs> we got fired. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not i'm not talking about you mistake no, just in general in general they may they may want to uh, quit their job and um and be a DJ, uh, dj for example but yeah. they 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 might be very very acutely aware of the fact that they have responsibilities so Definitely. they have to take a different route so um for example, in, in my case, so so my mum does her thing, my mum's a boss, my dad does his thing. Um, so I didn't necessarily feel the same level level of pressure um, other children may feel, but there was a level of pressure there with me being the oldest. So mm-hmm. I was, even even when other people that may have been in the situation, uh, a similar situation to me may have left their job, I was always, how can I leave my job? I need to make money, I need to bring in yeah. money, I need to make money. Mm-hmm. Um, and this kind of links to the transferable skills thing because although I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, I thought, you know what, what am I good at? And then I thought, okay, I'm good at social media. I'm good at writing. Why don't I work in communications? And that's when I started working in comms, worked for the NHS, worked for Oxford University. And I was literally building newsletters, managing social media, managing websites. And all the skills that I picked up along the way, working for the National Health Service, working for a university, have helped me to be where I am now. Mm -hmm. And even when I started that journey, like I had zero intention on building this online brand and becoming Mm -hmm. hyper visible on Twitter and and building a brand on Instagram. I was literally just tweeting to tweet. It was like a stream of consciousness, 
But because of my transferable skills and the mm. way people took to my content, when people started reacting in a way that I thought, wow, like this isn't just fun and games for me. Like people really appreciate what I have to say. That's when the transferable skills came in. And I was thinking, mm -hmm. okay, how can I market myself? How can I brand myself? Let me take what I learned at Oxford, take what I learned at the NHS and build something out of this hobby, out of this passion mm. of mine. And I think like in a weird way, where I am now isn't just a result of me and my journey. It's also re a result of how people have related to my own skill. Mm -hmm. So um, I could have easily just have been tweeting on Twitter and then just going along with my day and just been tweeting God knows ev whatever and about everything, about this show, what I'm eating for breakfast, whatever. And people may have not related to it. Um, but because people shared my content, because people engaged with me, because people sent me private messages about how much they appreciate what I ha have to say or how my writing has helped them. So mm. many people who don't even know me personally, they are part of the reason I am where I am because they gave mm. me the boost to say, you know what, I must be good at this because this person who doesn't even know me has told me I'm good at this. So mm. let me focus on this. And it's crazy how sometimes like a hobby or an interest is could be so much more for us, but we don't necessarily know because we don't realise how good we are at the hobby, if that makes sense. Exactly, I think it's yeah. I think it's important, like, when you are so multifaceted and really good at so many different things, to kind of, like, take a step back and take stock. Okay, I know I'm good at X, Y, Z, but which one is creating the most impact? Which one yeah. do I do effortlessly? Like, mm. like you said, what you were doing was a stream of unconscious thoughts. So it was just flowing. And I think a lot of times it's what we do that we don't even have to second guess. That tends to be, you know, the the passion and the purpose that we should be kind yeah. of like leading mm -hmm. with. Um, mm -hmm. Because if it takes too much effort, if it if it's something that we have to like, you know, completely push learn yourself. from the beginning um, and, and, and push ourselves and force ourselves into doing it, then maybe that's not necessarily, you know, the, the purpose driven, um, you know, kind of like activity mm -hmm. or, or career that you need to do but mm -hmm. when it's happening naturally and people are attracting to a be people are being attracted to it then why not go for it like I think sometimes that can also be a trigger to be like okay maybe I should be a bit more serious about this because people are you know mm -hmm. coming to this and I don't even have to do that much work so mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's such a good point it yeah. is a really really good point man and the transferable skills thing is I just think it's like just don't discredit any any of your experiences because it just yes. all means something. Do you know what I mean? Like, because when you just mentioned the transferable skills, it made me think about like my years when I was interning at a modeling agency. And the I only reason, that. yeah, and the only reason why I did it was because I used to watch MTV The Hills and they just made it look lit working in fashion. Like I did New York Fashion Week. I used to like, you know, scouting models and all of that stuff. And I did it just because it just felt like the New York thing to do, like modern yeah. agency, you know, running through Fifth Avenue and <laughs> kind of catch the subway. It just seems like life, do you know what I mean? But years later, because of that experience of knowing what to look for in a model, knowing about um, photo shoots and all of that stuff, I was able to like transfer that into my business where at a time when people weren't really taking imagery that serious, I was able to use those transferable skills of knowing, having that eye for models and I used to think it was just natural but looking back it wasn't really just natural it was from that experience that I counted as nothing like I honestly didn't see it as anything at all but it became a transferable skill you know and I think just don't discredit those yeah. those experiences that we have you know it all adds up to just become something in some kind of way you just don't know when it's going to happen you know when you're going to have that full circle moment I want to play devil's advocate for a bit mm. um shout out my pastor at my church worship tabernacle bang bang <laughs> anyways um literally this week just gone um my pastor actually did a sermon on purpose finding your purpose mm. and this thing that he just said really really triggered me he basically said like we're in this social media generation right so because of that a lot of people are following are looking around and following people's produce of based off their purpose so people are looking at what people are producing based off their own individual purpose and mm. imitating and copying that even though it's got nothing to do with what their purpose and what their real passions lie in mm -hmm. so off the back of that it's like 
is imitation flattery? Because I think a lot of times we're looking around, everyone's doing everything. And sometimes it's so easy to get lost in the noise of it all. And before you know it, you're taking on hobbies, passions, activities that don't actually align with what Mm -hmm. you are about but because it's the popular in thing to do you're running with it yeah how do people feel about that yeah I, I totally yeah. get that point I feel like imitation can sometimes signify misdirection or, or someone being lost and the reason why I say that is because um in late 20s early 30s now I'm at I'm at a point in my life where it's just like comparison isn't a thing like I can look at someone and think oh that's really inspiring I like how they they did that but with age, I've come to realize there's one me. There's only one me that can do what I do, how I do it, like period. Mm -hmm. But when I was a teenager, when I was in my um, early 20s, I found myself in that state of confusion. Which direction do I go in? And that's where imitation occurred in the sense of, um, for example, YouTube. I had a YouTube channel. I was talking about makeup. I was talking about hair. I was giving tutorials. Was I passionate about teaching women how to apply their makeup? No, I wasn't. Mm. When I think about what I care about, it's what I do now. Talking about life, talking about relationships, talking about mental health, talking about things unrelated to beauty. That mm -hmm. wasn't my passion. But mm -hmm. I was imitating people that were successful, thinking, oh, mm -hmm. people people say I would be a good YouTuber. She kind of looks like me. I can do this. I have the equipment. Let me do what she does because she's mm -hmm. successful and hopefully I'll be successful. But the passion was not there. And because the passion wasn't there, the consistency wasn't there. The dedication yeah. wasn't there. Yeah. And people could see that in my content. Do people follow me? Do people subscribe? Sure. But people didn't relate to my content the way they, they relate to my writing now on Twitter, for example. And I think they relate how they relate now because they can see that I live in my truth. Like, this is my personality. This is what I believe. This is how I say. This is me. Like, what you see is what you get effectively. But when I was trying to imitate other people, it was because I was lost. I was confused. Mm -hmm. And I was searching for some kind of direction. And mm -hmm. that's where the imitation came from. Even when I was younger, um, I, like like Rita said earlier, like I was a radio presenter, I was a TV presenter. That's how not, we met. Yeah, that's how we met. And <laughs> not saying, actually, to be honest, those two things I still feel have um, influences into what I'm doing today. But there was one time when, okay, just because um, I used to be on Tumblr and I used to dress, I would say I used to dress nice and stuff Hipster. like that. So whatever, girl. So every <laughs> So everyone was just like, oh, you should be a stylist. You should be a stylist. So I was thinking, oh, okay. Like, okay, if I could dress nice, let me be a stylist. Yo, that thing, that dream didn't last like more than a year. Like I, I, I proper forced it. I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to be a stylist. I'm going to like intern with some really cool stylists and really get out there. I did about like two, three shoots and I was tired. And so I do feel like, you know, like honestly, it wasn't for me and it would never be for me. And I think... You know, sometimes when you are in that um, state of kind of confusion, um, don't let people put job exactly. titles on you. Exactly. Like, yeah. really take the time to think about what you actually enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. Don't just oh kind of take yeah. what someone oh else says you should do and then mm -hmm. do it. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. I was going to say with the whole don't let people box you, because I feel like the internet or just mm -hmm. society in general loves to like box you because when yeah. I first started out it was like I was tweeting of course tweeting for myself I often tweeted about relationships and then I became that kind of like ask or Lonnie like oh person that everyone goes to do dilemmas and I hated it so much I was just like really? <laughs> <laughs> we're not doing dilemmas no more we're not doing them we're going to talk about sex that's what we're going to do so I was like, I'm about sex so I, I thought you enjoyed it. No, like sometimes like, yeah, it's <laughs> great to talk about, but imagine someone That's posting true. their trauma to you daily. Like it can fuck true. up your own mental health sometimes. True. Like knowing true. that there's an anonymous person out there that you can't help. But yeah, my yeah. point was that never let someone box you. Like make sure that you can be that person that can still work crazy in their own field, but you can still jump out of that box. So jump out of that box, but still do exactly. something in your field. So 100%. my thing is always going to be dating relationships or sex or whatever, but I would always bounce around. It would be like, okay, we're going to do dilemmas. Now we're going to talk filthy about sex. So give yourself that room to try different things before people try and just make you e that. Exactly. No, don't let that happen. Exactly. Yeah. Do you know what? Yeah, like what you said it, oh, is so key because I remember like I never went, like I never joined like Vine or like any of these like 
you know, like funny videos or any of that stuff. Like even though like I really, really wanted to. And the reason why I didn't do it was because I felt like people saw me as a business person. So I felt um... like I had to be serious. Do you know what I mean? Like I felt like I, I was boxed into this thing of like, being serious and being like inspirational and like right. knowing what I'm doing and understanding everything. And, you know, people will come and come to me for advice. Like, oh, how can I set up my business and all of this <laughs> stuff, right? And it's like, I felt like I was in this box of like, I have to be this box of inspiration for people. But people who kn- knew me personally know that I'm like, you know, I don't take myself too seriously. I really have fun. And do you know what I mean? I'm, that's just my real personality. But I found myself in this box of seriousness and it was driving me crazy. Like, because I'm just not that serious. Do you know, I'm serious, but not in the way... There's basically, time and I'm the an place. Un, yes. And I'm an unconventional business person. Basically, Agreed. do you know what I mean? So I don't, I didn't, I don't go the conventional route to do Basically, anything. Basically, you're a cool mom. Basically, yeah. I'm just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that what you said about don't allow people to box you up is so so important because now, obviously, like with TikTok, suddenly it's a surprise yeah. that I have that you're kind of personality. In. You are still you know I mean? <laughs> Oh my god! No, your TikToks give me life. But that's just how I've always been. So that kind of just it just felt like a it felt like this burden had been lifted where I finally got to show my real self, if that makes any sense. But because I'm I'm 30 now and I don't care about anyone's box, you know, for me, it's like if one day I want to be given a seminar on how to have a successful business and how to also fail at business, I can give you both, honey. And if it's all about, you know, being creative and all of that stuff, I can also give you that as well. And that's okay, like to be different, to show different elements of your personality. So Mm. it's so important to not, allow people to box you because the thing is I feel like people box you as well because they box themselves do you oh, know what I mean yes, like they true. feel like they can only oh, do this so suddenly when you're you, doing other things it's a yeah. problem you know let me tell you a story yeah like well it's not it's not that exciting no honestly when it comes to um boxing and other people because they box themselves they now project that onto you like I would never forget there was a time where I basically was thinking about going into DJing full time. Obviously, like I said before, it got me, it took me getting fired to fully push myself into it. But prior to that, I was thinking about it and I was speaking to a few people. And one person in particular literally was just like, why do you want to DJ though? Like, there's so many other DJs out there. Like, why do you, why do you think you're going to be better than XXX, for example? And I remember going back and telling my best friend, I was just like, raw, like, Yo, you was know it a when, guy or a girl? It was a girl, but you know when someone tells you something and basically saying like that crazy idea that you have is hella crazy, like mm. what are you doing? It really can dampen your mm-hmm. mood and mm-hmm. really just demotivate you. So I don't know, I guess from that point, I realized that, you know what? When your dreams sound crazy, when your passions and your ideas sound crazy, sometimes don't even tell anyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and the same way, you know what? The same way you said people can box you in and make sure they don't box you in, it's the same way with people trying to push you out. And that's one mm. thing I will never forget about when I started my Twitter journey and building my brand. When I started, the amount of people that told me, told me it's enough, we've heard, shut up, mm. it's enough, keep quiet. Like... I was I, like I had a passion for talking about human interaction talking about relationships it was a stream of consciousness I enjoyed it it was like an online journal in many ways and also a tool, tool to help me share knowledge and advise people and people tried to shut me down so much and I think back at everything I've done all the people I've helped all the ways I've helped myself all the money I've made and I think if I listened to these people listen. I would not be where I am now I have mm. so much stuff in the pipeline and they could have killed all of that yeah. just because they tried to push me out of mm. this journey that I wanted to um I wanted to travel on so I think it's so important like don't let people box you in and once you found your thing you found your niche or you found don't something you're passionate about don't let people out. push you out if you mm. enjoy it if you're helping people if you love it and if you feel like it's a calling for you it doesn't matter what people have to yeah. say just drown yeah. them out like can, their, mm. their feedback means nothing and can i just yeah. say on that when you start off on your journey do not expect to be the best because yes. Mercedes, no shade but i'm sure you weren't the best dj when you first started but you became better when i, I like when this. i same thing with me same thing with me when i started writing i was not the best when no, i we we were start, we, yeah, you're not the yeah. best 
You no. will get better. Do just not have expect. To start. And that's what it is. When people want to push you out, it's because they feel like, oh, you're not that great. In that moment. Doing. And you might not be that great. There's nothing wrong with that, but you can grow. There's Definitely. always, there's always going to be, oops, sorry. There's always going to be like room for growth. And when you do get better, you will think back, like, imagine if I'd stopped. Imagine if I listened to right. the naysayers, where would I really be? So mm, just yeah. make sure whatever it is that you're passionate about it and find a friend who can keep it a buck with you. Someone yes. who isn't a yes man who will really give you constructive feedback because that's what you need as well. Because mm-hmm, sometimes yeah. I feel like, I'm not going to lie, sometimes I'm just like, does she have friends? Like, does he have friends? So make sure <laughs> you have good friends. Thank you for watching this episode of Hills Up At Home. If you enjoyed the episode, please like, comment and subscribe. And if you want to join in on the conversation, you can use the hashtag HeelsOffUK. Bye!